Hi guys, it has turned into a gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here. I'm sitting in my meditation chamber slash power spot out here in this undisclosed swamp. Uh, it is Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, or what is left of Super Bowl Sunday. And that would be Sunday, February 7th, 2021. So a few of you might recall that before everything turned weird, uh, when was it? About 10 months ago, I used to, every Sunday, uh, try to bring you what I called the uh, Doomsday Sermon, where I would uh, read from a non-fiction book uh, about some aspect of the collapse of a planet, you know, where I would read short sections from uh, books like Overshoot by William Catton or End Game by Derek Jensen or whatever, you know, some nonfiction book from the Doomosphere chronicling the collapse of a planet, but... Uh, there's been some changes this year. You know, I did not read a book in the year 2020. So uh, this year, I have made a New Year's resolution to start reading books again. But there's been a slight change, at least for now, until I change my mind. I am going to start reading fiction again. And uh, start reading just a wide variety of fiction and so I'm going to start back up the Doomsday Sermons. They might be sporadic uh, and just give you short little glimpses of books I am reading. Not so much Bibles of the Apocalypse, but uh, just some fiction for the collapse. And uh, we're going to have two very short readings today. First is from a book... Uh, by this author, this Japanese woman, Sayaka Murata, titled Earthlings. Uh, her book, Earthlings, and um, this book is kind of a coming-of-age novel, I guess you would call it, uh, about a, a girl and then a woman who believes she is an alien from outer space that she is so disconnected from her fellow human and global industrial civilization and whatnot that uh, she just finally determines she has to be a space alien because she does not understand her fellow earthlings, meaning her fellow human earthlings. So anyway, just a very short uh, passage from uh, chapter 2. So at this point, she is uh, going on from 11 to 12 years old and trying to figure out how the world works. And this is what uh, she comes up with. <clears throat> My town is a factory for the production of human babies. People live in nests packed closely together. It's just like the silkworm room in Granny's house. The nests are lined up neatly in rows, and each contains a breeding pair of male and female humans and their babies. The breeding pairs raise their young inside their nests. I live in one of these nests, too. The baby factory, and that's capitalized, the baby factory produces humans connected by flesh and blood. Eventually, we children will also leave the factory and be shipped out. Once shipped out, Male and female humans are trained how to take food back to their own nests. They become society's tools. 
receive money from other humans and purchase food. Eventually, these young humans also form breeding pairs, coop themselves up in new nests, and manufacture more babies. This was how I had always thought it was, and when they gave us sex education classes at the beginning of fifth grade, I felt vindicated. My womb was a factory component and would couple with someone's testes, which were also a factory component, in order to produce babies. Males and females all crawled around inside their nests with these factory components hidden within their bodies. I was now married to Yu. Uh, she wasn't really married, uh, you, you know. Uh, anyway, the, a childhood marriage to her male cousin Yu. I was now married to Yu. But being an alien, he probably could not make babies. If we could not find his spaceship, society would make me form a breeding pair with someone else. I hoped we would find his spaceship before that happened. As I cycled past the rows of identical houses, I thought to myself again how much like nests they looked. They resembled a huge cocoon that Yuu and I had once found in the Akashina Mountains. My town was a collection of nests, a factory for manufacturing babies. I was a tool for the town's good in two senses. Firstly, I had to study hard to become a work tool. Secondly, I had to be a good girl so that I could become a reproductive organ for the town. I would probably be a failure on both counts, I thought. <laughs> yes, she would be a failure on both counts. Hallelujah. Anyone uh, who refuses to be a work tool and a reproductive organ for society has my vote. And uh, so we have a little bit of the same theme. This is a, a book of short stories by a uh, novelist and short story writer T.C. Boyle called Tooth and Claw, and I actually remember having read this book, but uh, we have the same thing uh, visited in this second, so the third story in this 14-story anthology called Dogology. Dogology, and this is about a, uh, a biologist, a, this young female biologist uh, who just figures out that uh, she just cannot fit in her own species of humans, that she is so far out of touch with humanity and global industrial civilization uh, that she actually tries to become a dog, a you know a, a domestic dog, uh, to the best of her ability, since dogs seem to be happier than the fellow humans she uh, interacts with. She tries her hand, or should I say, her paw at being a dog, and so just a uh, just a couple of quick paragraphs from T.C. Boyle, Dogology. Whatever it was the dogs had heard, it was not available to her. 
though she had been trying to train her hearing away from the ceaseless clatter of the mechanical and tune it to the finer things, he might hear the airboat off in the distance. The clatter of the mechanical. You cannot get away from the airboats on beautiful Sunday afternoons here. Anyway, <clears throat> she had been trying to train her hearing away from the ceaseless clatter of the mechanical and tune it to the finer things the wind stirring in the grass, the alarm call of a fallen nestling, the faintest sliver of a whimper from the dog three houses over, begging to be let out. And her nose. She had made a point of sticking it in anything the dogs did, breathing deep of it, rebooting the olfactory receptors of a brain that had been deadened by perfume and underarm deodorant and all the other stifling odors of civilization. Every smell was a discovery and every dog discovered more of the world in 10 minutes running loose than a human being would discover in 10 years of sitting behind the wheel of a car or standing at the lunch counter in a deli, or even hiking the Alps. What she was doing, or attempting to do, was nothing short of reordering her senses, though she could think like a dog and interpret the whole world, not just the human world, as dogs did. Alright, let's, uh, one more paragraph from T.C. Boyle. <clears throat> she no longer bothered with a notepad or the pocket tape recorder she had once used to document the telling yip or strident howl. These were the accoutrements of civilization and civilization got in the way of the kind of freedom she required if she was ever going to break loose of the constraints that had shackled field biologists from the beginning. Even her clothes seemed to get in the way, but she was sensible enough of the laws of the community to understand that they were necessary at least for now. Still, she made a point of wearing the same things continuously for weeks on end, sans underwear or socks, in the expectation that her scent would invest them in the scent of the pack also. How could she hope to gain their confidence if she smelled like the prize inside of a box of detergent. <laughs> there you go. Uh, amen, Brother T.C. Boyle and Sister Sayaka Murata. That, uh, you know, on um, this writing about uh, the inability to grasp uh, the whole concept of global industrial civilization and uh, our own species of earthling that has become so far uh, uprooted and disconnected uh, from our home planet that, uh, you know, it's just, we, we have become aliens on our own planet. Uh, we have become so far removed from uh, whatever the original wild animal was that spawned us. Uh, 
that the only way to fight our way back is through things like literate art and literature. And uh, it's good to know that we still have people writing the truth of fiction. And uh, I'm going to wrap up this doomsday sermon uh, for Super Bowl Sunday and uh, get back to my meditation and reading here uh, in my power spot while my fellow humans gather as much as they're still allowed to for Super Bowl Sunday to cheer on a bunch of their fellow humans chasing a weird looking ball around a trying a rectangle of ground I'm going to uh, tune myself into the rustle of the wind as the sun begins to set and I heartily encourage you to retrain your senses picking up on the rustle of the wind and try to ignore the clamor of the airboats in the background. Bye guys.